the milk or the cocoa is not quite the same. Looks the same, but it's different. Like Paul. Like Paul. I see my heart twist knitted like a sweet American. How long has Paul been teaching here? Two years. Superbly. The most popular professor Paul, they say. Well, except for Heidegger, of course. Not you two. I'm up to here with these odes to the greatest professor, the greatest of this, the greatest of that, on earth no less else. But Professor Heidegger. of the little magician of Mesker. Heidegger really is mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. Mm, superb. So is Heidegger had a Thank you. 
taking his skis to class. What do you make of a thought? A sign of posturing would balance the art. My mesmerizing, mesmerizing and brilliant. to learn, I hope to think, I hope to learn to think by myself, hence this magic brew of charisma and brain, my digger, tested and approved by you. He teaches at the crack of dawn. Could that be? Could that be a choice? Out of the question. Sorry for being late. I'm uh, Hannah Arendt. I, I I was wondering. Hmm. Always a good sign. For Kant, yes. Every experience is first and foremost a human experience. When we look at this hat, we cannot deny that we look at it in a peculiarly human way. Can we know what this hat is like apart from our experience of it? No, because we filter it through ourselves. Like all our experience, we interpret it through ourselves. Through time and space. Time and space. Time and space. If our own perception of this hat, just like our conception of the world, is confined by our own experience, which is in turn confined by time and space. How are we to make moral choices? On the basis of the categorical imperative.
Example of coming late. Professor Heidegger. In Kantian terms, we can see the far reaching implications of any choice. A choice like coming late. Now, back to the mystery of existence, the oldest mystery on earth. Let's see some of the solutions to it. How did Plato see it? The world is but a copy, a copy of a perfect realm. And Pythagoras, mathematical, for him the world is mathematics. Descartes, cogito ergo sum. The world is the result of our thinking. Kant. The world is the product of our mental structure. Nietzsche. Will to power, a game of chaos and power. Astro. The world is a phenomenon of our existence. Phenomenal. And of course, what they all forget. What they all forget to even consider is the fundamental mystery. The fundamental, the fundamental mystery. mystery that something exists rather than nothing. That the world is being is the primordial condition for beings to exist. Consequently, consequently, we must, we must face up to the departures, to nothingness, to death. We 
we're going to die, so might as well take responsibility for the life we're going to live. <laughs> to act. To live. To act. No one else. No one else. No one else but you. No one else but you are in charge of your life now. My life, my life, in charge of my life. To know my being must depart one day from being into nothingness. Then you know, then you are in charge, then you know how to make the most of your choice in life. We must, we must embrace, we must embrace the chance. Then, and only then, we live. Then, and only then, we live an authentic life. Then, and only then, we live, then you can. world, caring about actions, caring about my world, caring about your world, then you
back in the face. But then, what happened then? Did the dwarf enter the puddle? The hesitant light of the night. But then, Did the dwarf enter the puddle? What happened? The hesitant what light happened? of the night.
History so self centered. A truly egotistical affair. Miss Arendt, is there any other being that believes other beings exist for it? That all of being exists for it. Remember Descartes. I think, therefore, Miss Arendt, you see, it's me. It's me, 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 I am the ultimate point of breath. Ultimate point, I am of the ultimate point of reference. 
Let's take the tree. Leaves provide air. Turn carbon dioxide into oxygen so that so that we can take our breath. Breathe, breathe, and hence live. A tree consumed by flames of fire produces us heat, light, and energy, and heat to sustain you and me. And then there's paper, another brilliant use of this thing we call a tree. This thing called tree is phenomenal. Could it possibly be without it? It's there to take a rest. For us to take a rest day after day in its shade. Think of your hat. Now your hat would safely sit on the branch of a tree. Beyond all that, it feeds us. All very useful if our view is limited to the filter of you. is limited to the filter of you. Miss Arendt, move into my mind to think this through. Move into your mind to think. Move into my mind. Move into your mind. Move into my mind. Into my mind to think this through. We only see the tree as standing reserve, canned and preserved. Existing for you. For you. Often and with ease, we frame the trees, we frame it for us, for our use, for our purpose and desire. But if we move beyond that frame, from the viewpoint of use, this is just an object. But stuff, no more, no less. Miss Arendt, this hat is defined by its use to you and to me. Let's see. Size 12, well worn, but I could get, say, four marks for it. Or I could tear off the rim, throw it in the rubbish. The rest of this hat would serve me quite well, say, as a container for my index cards. But, Miss Arendt, for me this hat is different. I can see it and its context. In its context. Thank you. 
Everything is interconnected. 